The U.S. is on the move. From being dependent on foreign oil to a global energy powerhouse, thanks to a petroleum engineering innovation, hydraulic fracturing or fracking. Oil field operators can now access once unattainable stores of oil and natural gas, using primarily water and sand at high pressure. However, before learning about this technology, we need to spend some time on geology. In the last 20 years, large U.S. oil and gas reserves have been developed in what are called shale plays. An oil or gas producing shale can be over 1,500 meters below the surface, are typically 100 to 150 meters thick, and are spread over thousands of acres. The shale potential has been known for decades. However, because of ultra-low permeability, the hydrocarbons have been inaccessible. Permeability is the measure of the ability of any rock formation to allow a fluid to pass through it. In shales, the openings, called pore throats, are much too small to allow flow. So how do the engineers improve flow through low permeability reservoirs? First, let's introduce you to horizontal drilling, another technology that has made shale oil and gas development so successful. It starts with a long vertical hole, known as a well bore, drilled down through layers of sediment. When the well reaches 2,500 to 3,000 meters, it turns 90 degrees and extends in a horizontal lateral for about 1.5 kilometers through a compressed black layer, the shale rock formation. Shale layers are not consistent and directional drilling techniques are used in the lateral to move up and down, left and right, to stay in the formation. Once the well meets its total depth, a specialized perforating gun is then lowered and fired. This creates a series of holes, called stages, that burst through the well's casing into the shale rock layer. Today, horizontal laterals now exceed 3,000 meters, and some wells have over 50 fracturing stages. Then the well is ready for fracking to begin. Hydraulic fracturing, or fracking, uses treated water and propens injected into the well bore at high pressure, causing the formation to fail or split. A created fracture can be 90 to 700 meters long, 15 to 150 meters high, but less than 6 millimeters wide. It all depends on the geology of the rock formation. The fractured treatment can extend deep into the formation, increasing the drainage area volume. A shale well development plan can call for numerous perforated stages, spaced approximately 15 to 25 meters apart. Today, some fracked wells can have as many as 50 stages. Each stage could cost $100,000 to $200,000, so this is a very expensive operation. To keep the fractures open, what are called propents are placed in the created fractures. The propent provides a high conductivity flow path, like an eight-lane freeway for the oil and gas to flow through the well bore to the surface. The most common propent is sand, however, there is great pride in the industry in the design of custom propens. Today, a fracked well can use over 22 million kilograms of sand and other propens. To improve fracturing performance, a gel fluid is added to make the water thicker. Gel fluids help suspend the propens, allowing a longer fracture with less fluid. A common natural gel chemical is from a bean grown in India called guar. Now, let's see what equipment it takes at the surface to do a frack job. Just imagine the logistical challenge to manage 95 million liters of water and 22 million kilograms of sand at the well site. 
Once the equipment arrives, you could be surrounded by over $50 million worth of technology, all on wheels. Because the whole fracking process is done in a couple of weeks, and the equipment then moves to another location, there can be 50 men working around the clock. One thing is clear from remotely controlled valves managing 9,000 PSI to extra worker precautions, safety is the number one concern at the site. Let's follow this process from beginning to end. After pressure testing all the equipment, water is passed from storage into the red work tanks. The water is then pulled into a hydration unit to gel the fluid, as we discussed earlier. A conveyor moves the propant from storage tanks to the next piece of equipment, the blender. Here it is mixed with chemicals that aid in the fracturing process. The blended frac fluid goes to the pump trucks using the low pressure side of a manifold. The manifold is a series of pipes that connect the pump trucks to the blender and the wellhead. The pump trucks increase frac fluid pressure to as much as 9,000 psi, sending it back through the high pressure side of the manifold where it enters the well through the wellhead. The entire fracturing process is controlled from treatment monitoring data vans. As you can see, the heart of the fracking operation is the pressure pump truck, and there can be as many as 14 on a particular site. Pump trucks can have up to 2,500 horsepower. In 2018, a respected industry expert reported that the pressure pump truck market was over 23 million horsepower, and there were over 150,000 frack stages done on shale reservoirs in the U.S. Before we rest on our success, let's address two environmental concerns raised with this new technology. Does fracking threaten groundwater? Deep residential water wells can reach about 180 meters. A typical oil and gas shale well is drilled to at least 1,000 meters, far below the deepest water well. A landmark 2016 U.S. EPA study concluded that hydraulic fracturing operations are unlikely to generate sufficient pressure to drive fluids into shallow drinking water zones. Does fracking cause earthquakes? Very rarely, but what are called induced quakes are seen mostly in Oklahoma. However, the USGS noted that wastewater disposal is the primary cause of the recent increase in earthquakes in the central United States. In any event, studies continue on minimizing the environmental impact of fracking. Thanks to hydraulic fracturing and horizontal drilling engineering innovations, the U.S. in 2018 became one of the world's largest crude oil producers at nearly 11 million barrels a day with new production from one of the oldest plays in Texas called the Permian and is now a major exporter of natural gas thanks to production from the Marcellus Shale in Pennsylvania. We have over 30 modules available, covering upstream operations from industry experts that love to train. They are narrated and animated mobile-ready videos and ebooks, giving you four hours of digital training. To learn more, please visit us at www.ektinteractive.com.